Professor Dave and Chegg here. We know on a basic level what nucleophilic substitution is, so we are ready to dive a little deeper and check out specific types of nucleophilic substitution. Let's start by looking at the SN2 reaction. With the SN2 reaction, the S stands for substitution, and the N stands for nucleophilic. We will get to the two in a moment, but let's recall that with a nucleophilic substitution reaction, something called a nucleophile is attacking something else called an electrophile and making a substitution. So one part of a molecule is swapped out for something else. Let's review this terminology for clarity. A nucleophile is an atom or molecule that has some region of excess electron density. This can be a lone pair, a formal negative charge, just some region that we can consider as electron excess. An electrophile is an atom or molecule that has some region of electron deficiency. This could be an atom with a partial positive charge due to being bonded to an electronegative atom. This could be a formal positive charge. It's a region that is deficient in electron density. In any chemical reaction, some region of electron excess interacts with some region of electron deficiency. In other words, plus and minus attract. That is the story of chemistry, the closest we can get to summarizing the whole field in one sentence. The key to understanding organic chemistry will be the ability to identify these regions of electron excess and electron deficiency and understanding exactly what happens when they interact. In the context of the SN2 reaction, there is a nucleophile that is the electron excess, perhaps something like a hydroxide ion or a halide ion, and the electrophile is the electron deficiency, which is something like an alkyl halide with this partial positive charge on the carbon adjacent to the halogen, due to the polarity of this bond. In addition, for this reaction, there must be a leaving group. If the nucleophile attacks this carbon and creates a new carbon-carbon bond, this carbon must also lose a bond, since it can't have more than four, so there is some leaving group, such that the bond to the leaving group breaks when the nucleophile attacks, allowing carbon to maintain only four bonds. This leaving group will be something that is capable of being stable on its own once it leaves the molecule, taking the electrons in this bond with it. Getting a bit more specific, once again, take something like chloromethane and the hydroxide ion. Hydroxide will act as a nucleophile, and chloromethane will act as an electrophile, with the chlorine atom itself acting as a leaving group. This formal negative charge will approach this partially positive carbon and displace the chlorine atom, kicking it off completely to form methanol. This event is depicted by these electron-pushing arrows, and this is another thing we will have to get used to. These arrows are used to show precisely how the mechanism of a reaction takes place, and they must be shown in a very specific way. They will always go from electron excess to electron deficiency. So we go from the negative charge on this oxygen atom, which just symbolizes one of its lone pairs, directly to the carbon atom itself. This arrow indicates that a bond is forming between these two atoms. Then another arrow is drawn from the carbon-chlorine bond, ending on the chlorine atom, indicating that the electrons in this covalent bond are leaving with the chlorine atom, giving us the chloride ion as a byproduct. There are a few more very important points to mention about the SN2 reaction. The first is that it is stereospecific. This means that the nucleophile will only approach from one specific direction, and we will get just one specific product in terms of the possible stereochemistry. A nucleophile will always take electrons from its HOMO, or highest occupied molecular orbital, and dump that electron density into the LUMO, or lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, on the substrate. In this case, the orbital it needs to access is 180 degrees from this carbon-chlorine bond. We call this a backside attack. So in SN2, the nucleophile must always approach from precisely the opposite direction of the bond to the leaving group. This means that if the product is chiral, we will only get one of the possible stereoisomers. To understand why this is the case, let's look at the transition state for this reaction. This is where the 2 comes in. To avoid confusion, let's be clear that the 2 has nothing to do with how many steps take place in the reaction. This reaction happens in one step. It is a concerted reaction. The nucleophile coordinates and the leaving group leaves all at once. The 2 refers to the transition state itself and the fact that it is a bimolecular transition state.
The transition state is the highest point on an energy diagram. It is the highest energy confirmation that must be achieved in order for a reaction to go to completion, which can only be achieved if the nucleophile and substrate collide in the correct orientation and with enough kinetic energy so as to surpass the activation energy of the reaction. In this case, what we mean by a bimolecular transition state is that the substrate will be weakly coordinated to both the nucleophile and leaving group at the same time. We can see by this dotted line that a bond begins to form between oxygen and carbon, just as the bond between carbon and chlorine is beginning to dissipate. The nucleophile is pushing the molecule this way, which is why the transition state has this roughly trigonal bipyramidal geometry for just an instant, given the brief coordination of five electron domains. Then, as things continue, the molecule will invert completely, like pushing an umbrella too far, and we get this product. For this reason, the SN2 reaction can be said to be stereospecific, because it results exclusively in a specific stereoisomer. There is plenty more to discuss about this reaction, but for now we have defined some very important terminology and learned the basics about the SN2 mechanism and some of its features. Professor Dave for Chegg, see you next time.